This is a problem that when I first looked at it, I thought it was somewhat difficult until I reread it carefully. And what we have are two heavy balls are released from different heights, one 2.20 seconds after the other. If the two balls hit the earth simultaneously, four seconds after the first ball is released, from what heights were they initially dropped or were they dropped? Okay, well, when I first looked at this, I missed the four seconds after the first is released. This means the first ball hits the ground four seconds after it's released, because it's if the two balls hit the earth simultaneously four seconds after the first is released. Time for first ball to fall is 4.00 seconds. The time for the second ball to fall, it's dropped 2.20 seconds after the first, but it hits the ground at the same time, so it must take 4 seconds minus 2.20 seconds to fall. So the second ball takes 1.80 seconds to fall. They're both released, that's like dropping them, and they're not thrown, so this ends up not being too bad a problem. Now, I can either have down be positive on this thing, or I can have up be positive, but I think since all the action is taking place downward, I'm going to let down be positive here. So down is positive. Uh, let's see. This can be y final for ball one. This can be y final for ball two. And just let where they fall from be y. I'll use two different coordinate systems actually. One for ball one and one for ball two. Uh, let's see. So this will be y not one. Whoops. Y not one up here. That's where it starts from. And I'll just let that be zero. Okay. And then I'll have this other thing. Y not two. This is for the second ball. I'm also going to let that be zero. Okay. Now, I'll just treat this as an individual problem, the time for the first ball to fall. And what I can say is that y1, that's ball 1 here, is going to equal y0 for 1 plus v0t plus, down is positive, so it's plus one-half gt squared. Well, let's see. This is zero. v naught one is zero. Remember, it's dropped. This is zero, because I defined it to be for this problem. And I just get the position of ball one is going to equal one-half gt squared. Well, what will that be? Y final one will be one half times G times the four seconds squared. That's how long it takes to fall. Okay, so I just plug in the numbers here. One half times 9.80 meters per second squared times when you square four seconds you get 16.0 seconds squared and y final one the first ball is going to be 78.4 meters what about ball two it's going to be a very similar equation i'll have y2 is going to equal y naught for ball two plus v naught for ball two times t plus one half gt squared. Why not for ball two? For this problem is completely separate from the other one is zero. V naught for two is also zero. And I just get y2 is going to be one half gt squared. Where will ball two be when 
1.80 seconds have passed. That's why final for two, it will have traveled one half times 1.80, whoops, about 9.80 meters per second squared. Don't talk and write at the same time. Uh, times 1.80 seconds squared. And Y final two will be 15.9 meters. That's what you get when you plug and chug on that thing. So that's how far below the initial position is. So ball two started off 15.9 meters above the ground. Ball one started off 78.4 meters above the ground. And so what seemed like a confusing problem at first really isn't all that bad. That will about do it for our free fall problems. And tomorrow we'll start something new.